So session 11 recap, we started off with our party climbing aboard the Privateer's Fancy, a large four-masted galley that was going to be their home for the next three days as they made their way to Maybell, which was around 300 miles away. It was getting late in the date though, so they could, and they could tell that the captain wanted them to hurry. When they got to the top deck, they noticed a long line of sailors that were lined up in front of the captain. It seems they were getting paid, and there was about 25 to 30 of them. They were then approached by an older Eldrin, and they found out that he was the first mate, and his name was Siler. He informed informed them that due to whatever it was that came out of that portal over the ocean the other day, scared the shit out of the crew, and they were having none of that. This not being a navy ship, there wasn't really much the captain could do to them without a mutiny, so they were free to go. This also left the ship light-handed, and after the sailors disembarked, our party was informed that they will need to help. This went over on our party about as good as you would think. None of them other than Clark and Annie seemed to want to help. Um, Mind you, most of our party are pretty small, and there isn't really a lot they can do other than try. So, our Kerrigan was sent to keep the mice and rat population on the ship down. Annie and Clark were put on watch. Cargath tried to clean the ship, and Alric started to climb the masts and learn what he could, and Buster went and hide. Hid. They were also introduced to the captain's son, Junior, and were given a quick tour of the ship. It was about an hour after they were on board that the ship cast off and headed out into the oncoming night. At the helm was a large troll named Brazen, and they were also introduced to the bosun, one very large female ogre named Sheila. They were told to try and keep her happy and do what she says. After a few skill, yeah, after a few skill checks, our party finally were allowed to go below decks to their bunks for the night. A few went right to bed, but a few did sit down at a table with some of the crew to say hi and play a game called Rollies. The sailors were three human brothers in their 20s. Two of them, oddly enough, were called John, and one was Jonah. It seems there are many humans called John, so finding the one that they're looking for can't be that hard. Cargath liked the game so much he decided to play. Uh, This game, each player rolled a dice, and the lowest roll had to tell the others a secret. Gargath pretty much lost most of the time, and had to come up with a few secrets of his own. When morning came, it was their time to help up top again, and they found Clark and Kerrigan were not feeling that well. Apparently, they were both curled up being sick on each other, so they were given the day off. After a few more skill checks, Cargath found a very large hull fracture in the front of the ship. This led to a lot of activity. It took them a good half hour with Sheila and Cargath taking the brunt of the strength checks to get the fracture sealed and a bedridden Clark trying to help using a mending spell. Alric, Buster, and Annie were then put in a rowboat along with Siler to patch the front. Cargath and Sheila were on bilge duty, as a good amount of water was now at the bottom of the ship and had to preserve the cargo it needed to be bailed out fast. The rest of the crew were put on other tasks while this was going on. When the robot blah, rowboat got into the water and started going to the front of it, it was of course attacked by one very large and hungry shark. This fight went on for a while, and our Anakeet was lucky enough not to be either eaten or killed outright, but with a quick spell that turned into a large chunk of ice, she survived, but she still did get thrown overboard. After the shark was finally chum, the captain sent Buster to the kitchen with the remains of it, and to help the cook prepare some dinner. The rest of the day and night was uneventful for them at least, and Clark and Kerrigan were slowly on the mend. But come morning, it was quite different. During the night, a very bad storm blew in and turned the seas to about 20 foot swells. Blowing wind, rain, thunder, and lightning. But life as a sailor never did stop. Annie and Clark were back up on watch. Cargath was trying to keep things secure. Buster was hiding, and Alric was up in the masts. 
After a few more skill checks, it was Clark that noticed a small boat get capsized a few hundred yards out on the port side. And when he called out with that, no one knew. Yeah, and he called out with what no one ever wants to hear. Man overboard. There was, however, nothing they could do for the three crew of the boat as they were all swept under. But, after a few moments though, when all they thought was lost, something came out of the water carrying all three of the bodies. Landed on the deck, used some sort of magic to get all the water out of the sailors' lungs so they could start breathing again. Looked around and said, all right, who's in charge? Name's Arthur. We need to fucking talk. Oh, and Annie knew that he was a Triton, and they are the moon's native inhabitants. That's where our session ended and where we are picking up. So as soon as that happens, um, the captain, who is a little shaken, um, you guys are still in 20-foot swells. It is still shit weather. Um, he is going to run up to you guys and say, take care of three of them if you can, please. Uh, big guy, um, my office. So who wants to go take a look at the bodies? And help. Oh, Clark will go over and see if there's anything he can do. Okay. Uh, as you get over there, um, you're going to notice two of them are fairly big. Uh, one's fairly slender. Uh, you are going to see one that looks to be some sort of elf or half elf, and the other are two orcs. Uh, they are coughing water into their lungs. Seems to be quite a bit of it still. Um, they look pretty much ragged, tired. Um, most of their clothes are torn. Um, and they just kind of look to be workers. You're not too sure. They could be just dock workers. Well, if you permit me, I actually have a uh, bonus action uh, mass healing word that I would like to cast on all three of them. Sure. So they get four points of healing, all of them. Okay. Um, you'll notice like quite a few cuts and bruises are slowly closing. Um, it helped, not a lot, but uh, it will help keep them stable. Um, they look fairly, they're not like, um, hungry or any, like they're not uh, malnourished or anything they're just tired um the uh the two arcs are going to pretty much uh just uh look at the half elf and just look around and um we were dead weren't we uh the other orc uh, one looks fairly oldish uh, the other looks like middle um he's gonna look at the other one and go uh, i know i died uh, whoa, 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 you, 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 you're saying you guys actually died? I'm, I had uh, enough water in me. Yeah, I remember dying. How about you two? Uh, the elf's just gonna go. No, no, I wasn't doing too bad under there. Um, no, I was doing okay, but you guys, I'm, we went over pretty good. So, um, he's going to look up at you for the first time. Um, where are we? We got the name of the ship. <laughs> yep. Privateer's Fancy. You are aboard the Privateer's Fancy. Oh, we know that ship. I know that ship at least. How about you two? Uh, the two orcs are just going to look at each other and go, I think it rings a bell. Um. Anyway, uh, who do we have to thank for that? And how did we get here? We, we remember seeing a ship in the distance, so we just started rowing. Some random help you aboard. <sighs> okay. Well, I'm... how did you guys... How did you guys end up in this boat in the middle of this storm in the first place? Our ship went down. About uh, what time he's going to look up? Go. I think we were rowing for a couple hours. Just 
as soon as the the weather hit, we got broadside by a uh, random wave and knocked us over. We're in a, a just a f fishing hauler. Like we had like twenty a crew on board. Um, we managed uh, as soon as it topped over. We we just seen a rowboat and got in it. Uh, couldn't see any more of the crew, so we just started rowing. You said that the captain took Cargath into his quarters, correct? Uh, the captain took, um, not Cargath, uh, uh, he took, um, Arthur. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, okay, upon hearing this, what Clark is going to do, he's going to, uh, go over to the captain's quarters door and start knocking and, and yelling, Captain, there may be other survivors in the water. We must check this out. Um, at this point, you're going to hear the captain. Uh, he's going to pretty much get up and come out and go, Clark, right. Uh, I need you and your crew to come in on in here for a second, please. This gentleman wants to talk to all of you. I will take care of everything outside. Um, as he goes outside, he's going to grab a whistle that he's got on him and blow it. Um, as soon as he blows the whistle, the um, Arthur is going to poke his head out and you're going to see him uh, do like a small gesture in the air. Um, and if you give me perception checks. I'll do one for Cargath. Um, he got an at one. He's doing great. 18. <laughs> Not better. <laughs> Clark and Alric at least. Um, eh, could be worse. Anything from Buster? Uh, That's nothing from literally nothing no, from Buster. He is not here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed he dipped. As soon as you said that, I went to you. <laughs> He's not here. Okay. Um, we'll see if he comes back. So that's just how little he saw. <laughs> that's fine. Um, all right. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So what you're going to notice um, for 18 or 13 clerk and Elric, uh, on the side, you're going to see a female Triton uh, rise up on, off the ocean floor and start waving her hands back and forth. Um, it's kind of... Not really, you'd know it's magic of some sort, but not exactly what it is. Um, but as soon as sh that happens, your the ship's going to stop rocking. It's going to get calm. Uh, the ocean sprays off the ship. The wind is gone. And for a moment, the ship's just kind of hovering there. You can still see the storm outside. Still see the waves, you can still see everything, hear everything, but you're gone quiet and still. And Captain's just going to look around and go, I don't know what you just did, but that deserves a drink of rum. My cabinet's over there. Help yourself. I'm going to take care of these three. You guys talk to him. Um, right. And he's just going to go and pick up the, uh, go over to the two orcs and the uh, elf and start helping them up to their feet while you guys go inside. As uh, Clark kind of almost crosses the threshold of the door, he's just going to kind of look back over his shoulder don't forget, we do have another shipwreck. There might be survivors. And walk in. Uh, as soon as you walk in, the gentleman who's called Arthur is going to look at you. Come down to your height. Uh, put a hand on you and go, there is no survivors. I've already looked. These were the best I could get. Now. Wait, how tall is he? Uh, he'd be about 6'2", six 6'3". Six so he's pretty much lying down to the in the face. <laughs> he <laughs> pretty much sat down right in front of you and crossed his legs. Yeah. 
Well, now, I do like a drink. Uh, why don't you guys uh, have whatever seat is available, and I'm not going to take up much of your time, but I do need to talk with you people right away. Anyone want some rum? I'll walk through with Kerrigan and ask, yeah, can I have one of those? Right. He's just going to, um, like, open up the cabinet, grab whatever's there. It's pretty much rum and a bunch of, well, to you, big glasses, a couple shot glasses for the small of you. Because um, most of you guys are pretty tiny. Um, Cargath is going to... <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> Doesn't take much for someone his size to get trashed. <laughs> I don't think you're getting six levels of exhaustion, though. <laughs> <laughs> I clicked on it forgetting it was going to send a message here. Cargas uh, going to just sit down and go. Uh, I think I'm good. So, um, pleasure to meet all of you. I am Arthur. So, before I start. Because I'm going to talk for a bit. He's going to hand Elric a little shot glass with some rum. And he's going to basically get on his knees and look at you. You, my young one, are either very stupid or very brave or very lucky just to not to die from that shark yesterday. What yes. Do you mean I totally had that. Yes, I was there. I did see it. It was nice work patching that hall, by the way, for all of you. But why did you jump in? I've never seen someone who your swimming wasn't the greatest. But why? Why would you risk your life for that way? Uh. I, I, I actually don't know. Spur the moment decision. Well, I, I didn't I didn't give it thought. Well, in that case, uh, he's going to look in uh, kind of a small hand sack that he has, and from inside of it, he is going to pull out what, well. For most people, it'd be like a small, almost just like a hand pole that you put a flag or something on. Uh, for someone of your size, it looks like a spear, though. So, I noticed that your staff got a little crunched by that shark yesterday. That was entertaining for me. Our children learn how to fight in the water with something similar to this item but some of your stature it might work for you also so it's going to hand you uh what pretty much is like a little um it's pretty much a spear for you um, and i've already put it in your inventory for you so if you refresh D, &D beyond it's called the oceanic spear Ooh, interesting stuff. So you're going to notice that there's a bunch of engravings on the spear itself of dolphins jumping um, and leaping. And it's pretty much just like looking into the ocean when you actually see the spear. It unfortunately does take a attunement. So you're going to have to unattune one of your rings to use it. So what it'll let you do, uh, this is him telling you, um, it helps our children learn how to fight in the water. Uh, so it's going to give you a plus one bonus to attack and damage. It's magical. Um, you can ignore the normal penalties on ranged weapon attacks if you throw it underwater. And once a day, you can use the command word that is on the side of it to cast water breathing on yourself. And it'll give you 30 feet swim speed. 
So basically, if you need to go underwater, you will be able to once a day cast water breathing and you won't have any negative effects on your movement. Hmm. So, Neat. I hope, I'm glad I actually had one handy, that this will, um, you know, make up for the one that you lost. Oh, it's more than mix up. Now, while you guys sip on that rum, I'm going to tell you a story, if that is okay. The reason I'm here. We'll save all questions to the end. My kind have lived in the oceans here for a very long time. Well over 10,000 years, and we have, until recently, lived with no main issues at all. Until your people showed up. We have three main cities here on what you call Luna 1, Celestria, Stellaria, and Atlantica. And they are now threatened by something you have all unleashed. Whatever it is that you did to cause that earthquake 15 years ago also did not help the situation. It blew off one of the top of the largest active volcanoes on this world, and it also caused one of the underground volcanoes to destroy Atlantica. We lost close to 400,000 tritons that day. Now, it took us a while to realize that this was not a natural cause. There are too many clues that had to be sorted through first, but we finally came to the conclusion, to the conclusion that you are all the reason. Not you individually, I understand that. We also don't know how or why this happened. And our leaders over the last 10 years have been looking for blood. And it's only because of a few of us that you haven't all been attacked as of yet. We also do realize that you did lose a lot of people due to this, so it can't be all of your faults. But we were here first. Up until the events of last week, I was almost ready to give up, so I went to one of our temples to pray for guidance. It was then I was given a vision. And in this vision, I saw all but one of you in the belly of a volcano running for your lives with hundreds of winged creatures chasing after you. Does this ring a bell? No. No. It should do a couple of you. It was our session one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to stop, say quiet to the others say. Okay. But since... Hmm. Anyway, then when I was passing by yesterday under the water, and lo and behold, I see one of you fighting a shark and the rest were fixing a leak. So I stayed and watched. Then when the storm got bad and I see this other ship go over, I had to act. So here we are. Questions? Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I assume you have lots of questions. If you're willing to save the others, why weren't you willing to help us with a shark? Yeah, you seem to be doing okay. I was there for the just in case. Plus, I wanted to see how well you'd handle the situation. I wanted to see why I was given a vision with some of you in it. If we had died, like, Apparently those orcs to say they just did. Where would you have jumped in at that point? Because I pretty much almost died. Almost doesn't count. I'm sure had uh, one of you been swallowed, I probably would have acted then. But you did okay. <laughs> I also assume I'm the one that was not in that vision. Um, I'm pretty sure I gave you one. Did I not? Ooh. I think I did. Maybe. Okay, I might have missed it. Yeah, Sorry. it should be you, Clark, Cargath, and um, uh, Alric. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Cargath will grudgingly nod and say, 
It does ring a bell. Yes. Yeah, when you guys first touch the monument in uh, Marzell, yeah. that's when you're given it. Yep. No, I was uh, no, I wasn't there for that. You watched them happen. It happened, and then no. um, but you, I didn't see what they saw. Not at that particular time. You got one after that. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'm pretty sure I gave you one. You. Yeah. If not, you knew about it because you would have been standing there when it happened. So you'd okay. know what exactly what they're talking about. Yep. Okay. Yep. Sorry. That's okay. It has been a while. <clears throat> so, any other questions? I know this is not the best time of the day to, f to do this in the middle of a storm, but I felt the time was right. Now, I don't know what you people are doing, what type of quest you're on has nothing to do with me but I can tell from your heading where you are going so after you are all done doing whatever it is you're doing and have time to sit down with your leaders to talk about the situation I would like to join that conversation and in his bag he's gonna pull out another item it's gonna be like a conch shell When you have time, and the time is right, all you need to do is go in any salt water and blow on this. And word will get back to me, and I will come to you. So, good luck with what you're doing. And he's going to pretty much take the entire bottle of rum with him. Get up. And go outside and jump into the water. And as soon as he jumps in the water, your ship is now back in a storm. And as soon as it starts rocking again, Clark fall kind of falls over. <laughs> yep. So as soon as that happens, over and stitch you back up. <laughs> yeah. As soon as that happens, the captain, um, he would have noticed this was coming. Um, he has told everyone to batten down the hatches. Um, he's got the uh, two orcs and the uh, half elf uh, under. Um, he's at least in their own room and recuperating. Uh, but you guys are now back in a storm, so I need deck saves to see how well you stand up, please. <sighs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I need to do Kargath. All right. Uh, uh, I can roll with Kerrigan. I'm going to say Kerrigan fell over. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. All right. So pretty much everyone, uh, Annie and uh, Kerrigan and Kargath are having issues. I just wanted tenor over. No, no. Uh, Kargath is doing not bad. So pretty much Annie and Kerrigan, um, you two <laughs> who have been doing the best, uh, are a little taken unaware of this and are down and in account for a bit. Um, the rest of you, um, what would you like to do to help keep this ship upright as you are now back in a storm? Well, I'll make sure it doesn't truly understand what he's doing with the ship, so we just going to run upside and just start taking orders. Okay. Um, anyone that not too sure exactly what you need to do, um, the captain is going to be basically pointing at people and telling them what to do. Um, Kargath, he is pretty much uh, telling to make sure all the ropes are secure um, and everything is tightened on deck as you guys go. The troll at the helm seems to be for the majority still enjoying himself he hasn't really done much that you've noticed and he's never really left the helm uh, sheila is going to be you're going to notice her um, at the pretty much helping to make sure that the ship is upright um, she's going to be at the helm just to make sure uh, he doesn't need any help uh, the captain is just literally going to be just looking around making sure everything is secure um, do you I guys want yep 
Clark wants to uh, go up to the crow's nest. And we'll make it an owl nest now. Uh, <laughs> with uh, watching for obstacles. Okay. Uh, perception check, please. Or investigation, either will work. Let's see. And since you're all the 19 on your decks, you can give them uh, with advantage because you've, you've done it for two days now. We're going to do investigation. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. 20. Uh, for the most part, looks like nothing else is in your issue. You don't see any other ships that are having issues. Um, just looks like a shitty storm. Uh, you, with a dirty 20, you'd be able to tell that off in the distance, it does look like it's lightening up when you come in around the corner towards Maybell. So maybe a couple hours left, and then you should be semi-calmer weather. So Clark will uh, yell down to the uh, to the helmsman. Uh, Calmer seas ahead. He's just gonna give to you a good him. thumbs up. Water spraying everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so, for brevity's sake, I will say for the next few hours, you guys are pretty much just going to be all hands on deck, keeping this in order. Um, but for the majority, you do not have any issues, because luckily for you, most of the crew that is still on here know what the fuck they're doing. So, is there anything you guys want to do on board the ship before we hit Maybell? This is going to be the time. I think as soon as we hit calmer seas, Clark is uh, going down uh, to wherever Kerrigan and Andy are. Are, are you guys doing okay? <laughs> so it was still in the captain's quarters that we yep. kind of fell over. Right? Yeah, okay. it probably would have um, taken you a good 10 minutes to get situated in there. Okay, yeah, I'm going to say as soon as we were able to kind of get our footing better, um, I would have come out and gone to closer to the front of the ship to be able to look out and you know, see. But <laughs> I feel like being inside and like trapped away from the water kind of would have messed with with my balance and all of that. So I'll just be out on the deck somewhere that I can see. Okay. Yeah, like, so maybe maybe like midship around where we are actually on the map. Okay, that'll work. This is where we would be just kind of sitting if we needed to help somewhere. We or I would, but okay. yeah. Uh, for the most part, he would have just made sure that you kept an eye on the sails, that nothing was going to be split. Um, everything is secure and taut. For the most part, that's really all you need to do. Watch out for a storm and make sure that you don't get any reefs or anything coming up. But Archer to 20, uh, that's a good enough investigation to see that there's nothing really coming in his in the way. And these guys have sailed this before, so they'd know where to actually go to and from. So all in all, I will say... For the most part, unless you guys want to talk to anyone else, um, we will move to the point where you are slowly coming into May Bell, if that works. Yep. Okay. So, about a half hour out from May Bell, uh, you are in nicer, calmer water coming around the corner. Um, you would have had a good couple hours of rest in between. Uh, so, if you need to take a short rest, you can. I don't think anyone. We got a long rest after that shark. Fight, Before right? the shark, yes, yeah. Before the shark? No, well, like during the night. Sorry, after the shark. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's like, what I meant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like I'm actually almost dead. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think Kargaf was the only one who took a little bit of damage after, but he is fine now. In which case, yeah, just short vest to switch over tunements. Yeah, I figured probably the only one you'd probably get rid of is the one that lets you only sleep for four hours, I assume? The Elven Ring? Oh, no, I, uh, I, I did the X-ray vision. Oh, right. That's true, too. You don't need that yet. Because Elven Ring, that, I can, that gives me what, 
four hours. Yeah, four hours for a sleep. Two short rests. But yeah. like a short rest, switch it back to X ray. Sure. You have two hours of X ray if it needs to be. Okay, beautiful. All right. So about a half hour away, um, by the time he lines up and starts figuring out where he's going to uh, park the ship, um, he's going to uh, ask you guys, um, who's good with uh, sorting through shit? Um, I have a list of uh, all the goods and shit I have in my hull, in my cargo, um, and I'd like to double check to see if anything's damaged. I'll do it. Since I am small, I will be able to maneuver down there very well. Uh, anyone else want to help you, or do you want to do it all on your own? Um, I think what, it, what Clark's going to do is go over, put his wing around around Kerrigan. Mm -hmm. I think I'll have him help. <laughs> uh, I'm going to send the big guy. I'll send the big guy down with you. Uh, he's going to look at Cargath and go, Cargath, you're with him. Check all this stuff. Casey needs anything moved. And you've been down there pumping the bilge for quite a while, so you know you're way down. Cargath's just going to give him a good thumbs up and say, all right. So your list of things. Um, I basically want a quick... Um, you want to help too there, Buster? Sure. Uh, Buster will come down with you. Um, keep getting. Oh, there we go. Huh. You can hear, but it won't unmute you. That's weird. I don't know if I can manually. No, I can only shut you off. Yeah, not too sure. Um, it says it's on the Discord one, so maybe hit the deafen and then. Try and get it all off again? I don't know. I'll let you figure that out. Because I don't think that's on... That should be a Discord mute, not anything else. Worst comes to worst, you can always uh, leave and come back and see if that'll fix it for you. Uh, but while you're underneath, um, give me quick... Uh, let's do straight investigation to see uh, how much is damaged compared to what is on the list. So the list you were given, uh, pretty much, ooh, 21's are nice. 15 from Cargath. Um, yeah, it won't let me unmute. There you go. It says it's off now. You should be good. Speak. Yeah, it wasn't me. But I don't see the mute button there anymore for you. Can you hear me? Yep, there you're good. Yeah. Perfect. Something weird happened there on you. <clears throat> okay, so the list itself that he gives you. Um, let's find where I put it. So, the ship is hauling silk, fire ferns, starfire lily seeds... Uh, those are some of the more popular flowers from Marzell. An assortment of herbs from Marzell. A variety of tea and coffee from Luna. Perfumes, oils, and spices from about 12 different vendors at the Luna Keep. So with your 21 investigation, you will notice that for the majority, everything is doing okay except for most of the tea and coffee. Yeah, leave it your 10, yeah. So the, the dirty 21 old, that's pretty much everything is else is doing okay, except for the tea and coffee. Okay, so uh, I will go back up on deck and, and communicate that with the, the captain. Uh, <clears throat> well, that's okay. Coffee's easy to come by. The tea was... That's fine. Um stuff happens but at least everything else is okay i'm glad the perfumes and oils and spices are good because that's the majority of where i make my money i was going to say it i think those were probably more uh on the pricey side than packed a little bit yeah 
Coffee's still hard to come by. Good coffee, and that was good coffee. Real shit. All right. Thank you. Um, if you guys want to grab your stuff, any of you been to Maybell before? I don't think you have. I think I asked you that. I can't remember. It's been a busy three days. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. I don't think anyone's been to Maybell before. I don't think any of you have. No. I I'm pretty sure none of you Maybe have. Maybe like a stop by that I've written in. I don't think so. It wouldn't really, because it's a religious port, for the most part, I don't think you guys would have gone there before. We'll say no. no like, maybe like gone in passing. Maybe, yeah. Stopped there, gone off. Okay. Um, anyway, um, he's just going to basically just say, well, I don't know what the hell we would have done without you folk. Uh, probably drown. Um, grab your shit uh, once I get into port here and get everything off you'll be free to go do whatever you need to do um, I have been told by Chester that I'm only allowed to stick around for two days so if you're not done in two days I'm going to be gone and you'll have to find another way home so Here thank you thank you for the uh well, can't say safe, but the uh, passage <laughs> happened. I was paid well for it. <laughs> we'll just go with that. I also need to now find a crew, so I might be here longer than two days. What you guys do? Considering you've never been on a ship and done anything before, you did good. Um, at this point, Junior, uh, who has been pretty much just ignoring everything and doing what he's been told, uh, also comes up and uh, looks at his dad, and he's got like a small little chest in front of him. Uh, I think they've earned it. Captain's just going to look at him and go, it's coming down to your share, so sure. Um, Junior's gonna, just going to come up to uh, Cargath and hand him a small little chest and... Uh, your wages. It's a little bit more than three days worth, but you guys saved us from a lot. Appreciate it. So yes, um, Cargas is going to open up a small chest for you guys, and inside it's going to be about 800 gold that you can split. Worth the six of us? Uh, five. I could have just did 500 gold, but I rolled and it said six. 60 gold each. Yeah. Wait, how much is it each? It should be 120 each. 120. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Junior. Nope, thank you. We would have probably died, hence the extra bonus. So after... One, hmm? Actually, before Junior leaves, Clark is actually going to take three... No, we're going to make, make that eight of the gold and hand it back to him. Okay. Since this came out of your half, here's a little bit back. Hmm. Or your share. It's actually more than my share, but thank you. I appreciate it. It will go to good use. I need new clothes. I need to be able to tell that most of his clothes are like slowly starting to... Uh, he's overgrowing them. Uh, by now, the uh, two orcs are in the um, half-elf that uh, were... Rescued, uh, you'd know, are milling around the deck. They seem to be doing a lot better than they did the other day. Um, the two orcs uh, and the half-elf are just going to come up to you guys and look at you up and down and go, uh, Well, uh, Captain filled us in on a few things, and I'm told that you're, this is the elf talking to you, that you guys are uh, leaving here. Uh, 
guests before you guys leave, I'll introduce ourselves. Um, I am Oland, uh, this is Wolglug, and No Flug. Uh, the two uh, orcs are just pretty much just looking around on deck. They're not really paying attention much to you guys. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, uh, Captain's uh, going to let us uh, actually stay on board, so we're going to be part of his new crew. Well, hopefully this ship will go the way of your previous one. Oh, it's a lot bigger than ours. So, we just like being on the sea. We don't really care what we're doing. And these two don't talk much, so as long as they're paid and fed, they're happy. They're our best workers on board, so... Unfortunately, uh, we lost a lot of people that day, and I was the uh, first mate, so... Yep. It was a good ship. We've been on it for quite a while. But, it does happen. So, I just wanted to say, pleasure to meet you all. Likewise, and Clark will give this uh, big showman flourish <laughs> bow to all three of them, even though the orcs aren't paying attention. <laughs> Not too much, no. They're orcs. Uh, they'd be more uh, interested in Kargath. But since he's not and here, I'm... Gonna say, I'm just going to say, I'm glad you made it through and just kind of nod. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Me too. It was a hell of a storm. Well, I'm going to in Discord, and actually, in Roll20, because I think I have it set up, I'm going to move you over to the city of Maybell as you guys slowly move in. So you should be going to a new map in Maybell. That's huge. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So over on the corner over here where I'm pinging is uh, looks like a guardhouse, but it's got a lighthouse on top of it. Um, looks like there's some sort of army barracks over here, and then the rest is the city itself. Um, you guys are going to be coming in through this tiny channel and docking inside the city. Um, for the most part, it looks like all these docks are for smaller ships, uh, like little smaller fishing vessels, but you guys are going to be docking right about here. And those are walls around the entire city? Yes. Okay. Ooh, what's that up on the hill? Up uh, here? Or where are you pinging? Uh, that looks like to be some sort of, uh, even from the distance where you are, kind of looks like an army barracks of some sort. But now you've mentioned it, what is this? That would be a lighthouse. Nice. Yep. So, as you guys come through into the city, um, the captain's pretty much just going to walk up to you guys and go, well, welcome to Maybell. Uh, it's an extraordinarily religious port city. Um, yeah, it's got eight different districts, one for each of the, uh, you know, religions that are people, you know, worship. I don't, so I don't only come here when I have to. Um, for the most part, you're going to do okay here. Um, they do have their own guard system. Um, they're called the Guardians of the Eight. Uh, they're protected by... A, it's like a special order. They're a group of warriors who pledge their allegiance to the city's uh, diverse religious principles. Um, you're going to see most of them clad in like weird ceremonial armor uh, representing each faith. Um, they basically protect everybody here but because they're religious they sometimes can be a little iffy i've heard of uh certain knights that may have done this in the past as well it does tend to happen every now and then but for the most part most people here are pretty good um because there's a variety of uh, people that come in and out here the food is spectacular um, since you guys don't really know too much, I'll give you the eight districts. One's called Lunaris Embrace, uh, Temple of the Shadows, 
uh, Harmony's Heights, uh, The Forge of the Ancients, The Celestial Sanctum, Songhaven, uh, The Mystic Bazaar, that's the majority of where I go and all my stuff come from. Uh, then there's the Everflow Plaza and the Ebon Flow. Uh, that's pretty much the most eight districts. Um, they also have a lot of festivals and celebrations here, as you guys would well know. Um, there's a massive library here. Uh, they call it the Wisdom Library. Um, they also have a sort of cancel council. What's the call? I think they call it the Council of Unity. Um, it's uh, basically a group of representatives, rep representatives from each of the religions. Uh, they convene regularly to ensure all the peace and cooperation. Um, their, all their decisions are based on consensus. Uh, they basically collaborate and share all their everything they need to know, like oh, without all throughout the communities here. So, if as long as you don't have to appeal to them for anything, you guys should be fine. But yeah, there's lots of places, uh, toy stores, trinket stores, you name it, it's going to be here. I don't really know a lot about the ins and outs of everything, but I'm sure you could find someone to tell you. Can you, you point us in the direction of the best food and perhaps the library? Sorry, uh, sorry. Opposite ends of the city. Um, food, go to the bazaar. Um, pretty much the center of the city itself is the start of the bazaar. You'd be able to find anything from there. So the bazaar is a list of all those districts? Yeah, I'll stick them in there for you. So the bazaar is pretty much here, where I'm pinging, in the center. Uh, the library, eventually, once you guys find out, it's going to be over in the corner. So, <laughs> Clark's going to look up at Cargath. Hit up the uh, the bazaar, there, buddy. I'm sure, they're great food. Yep, I do enjoy the food, but as you guys do know, we are on a time limit to find John. We could take a couple minutes and get some get some uh, I, nurse. I would love that. Yes, I do agree. So. Clark is going to actually just start flying towards the uh, center of town. Okay. So, as you guys finally touch down, put your feet on solid ground for the first time in three days. You've gone through quite a lot on board. And you guys feel a little really good. Like, quite good so good that you can add a permanent plus two to your constitution push it like out yep whoops i missed that permanent what sorry permanent plus two, two to your constitution mm. ooh, ooh. Oops. That's dexterity. I don't want dexterity. No. <laughs> God damn it, stop rolling. I know. You, you, it, it, I did the same thing as soon as I click on it. <laughs> yeah. There it is. So that's, a, that's a plus two to the base stacks. So plus one to whatever the modifier is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or like you can always, like, Cargath was at a 16, so I just overrode his score up to an 18. Right. Yep. Works that way too. <laughs> And I actually get the bonus this time. Yep. Feels good. Yeah, it should have given you, what, five extra hit points? Something like that? Yep. Yeah, because you yeah. only had a plus one. It's my way of getting around using point buy. Uh, the more you do, the more um, I will reward you in certain skills. So three days at sea would make you a little bit tougher in your whole trip to get there, like six days journey and whatnot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why did it go to a negative four? Holy crap. 
<laughs> you, <can't laughs> you put two instead of eighteen or whatever. Or whatever you had. Yeah, what was your constitution? Oh shit, seventeen. Yeah, total so four. Yep. I'll do it. <laughs> I oh, think I, I did it right. I think mine was 10, and so I overrode to 12, and now it's a plus one. Is that, yep, that's how that it should work. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. okay, cool. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> that's better. Yep. <clears throat> now you survive one extra hit. I got a 16 constitution. I can take you around here, I can <laughs> right. I think as soon as Anakit got off the boat or off the ship, she would have just sat down, like, very cat-like, and just, like, dug all of her claws into the ground, dirt, grass, whatever it is, and just been, like, laying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you'll be able to tell Kerrigan is having a lot better time back on solid ground. I imagine him having me and just running around on whatever, whatever yeah. the turf is. going to be smelling everything, everything, making everybody... Yep in and around him very annoyed and scared <laughs> yeah just hopping and <laughs> batting around anything that's loose yeah. yeah 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 a panther in this port city is um probably the first mm -hmm. i'll learn to love him <laughs> um so as you guys depart um you are going to be uh this old female dwarf is just going to slowly walk up to you guys and go uh you guys staying or are you going to help him unload bang okay uh you guys been here before nope no where are you coming from Everywhere. Everywhere. Well, don't piss anybody off. Don't do anything stupid. Don't kill anybody and you'll be fine. Well, we tend not to do stupid stuff, but uh, sometimes stupid stuff happens around us. Right. That's pretty much everybody here. Uh, we got three inns that you can uh, probably stay at. Uh, we got the Flawless Kettle. Uh, the Rainy Tusk or the Hook and Anchor. I can tell you where each of them are. Or wherever you're trying to look for. I say we stay away from uh, nautical uh, themes right now. <laughs> you're going to want the Flawless Kettle then. Um, it's about... It's pretty much uh, one of the very first biggest that you're going to see near the uh, the bazaar in the middle of, the middle of the town. Pretty easy to find. Uh, pretty much this little uh, pathway here, keep walking towards it, you'll see signs for the bazaar. Hard to get lost. Right. Enjoy your travel and get out of my way, please, so I can get somebody to help him start unloading his cargo. Okay. I'm just going to nod and I'm going to toss her a silver for her help. Um... It's pretty much just going to be like catch in a bag. This is like her every day. Yeah, she's fairly old. Like white hair, green eyes. She's only about three foot seven, but she's a stocky bitch. Eye patch. Yeah. Feisty <laughs> Gail Hammersmith. Yep. Kind of Doc Master you need. And you'd notice, Cargath would notice a little bit more. She's in the colors of. Um, tracks color wise uh, so most of her clothes once I find my color scheme wherever I put it uh, she's gonna be gray and black yeah pretty much black with gray outline okay so um, as you guys slowly start moving uh, towards the center of town, um, give me some. What's everybody's passive perceptions? Like 13. 15. 14. Okay. Um, 
passive investigation tie though. What's that too? Either will work. Seventeen. Okay. As you guys slowly work your way through the city itself, um, you're going to notice that there's quite a few buildings here that are um, a little busted and broken. A couple of them are actually like completely fallen over. You're going to start to see quite a few people that are slowly still in a cleanup mode. Uh, it seems the last earthquake that you guys had four days, five days ago now? Three, four days ago. Might have done quite a bit of damage up here. So as you go, you're going to see um, closed signs on a few of the shops. Um, you're still going to see a lot of people fixing and building stuff. A uh, little bit of magic here and there repairing, uh, but for the most part, it is just going to be people either staying away from broken down buildings or just skirting around them while they slowly get repaired. Probably like one in every five buildings is quite damaged. Um, I think Clark is going to try to find the... Uh, the, the, the spot that has the least amount of damage um, and as a sign of uh, goodwill, he will cla uh, cast Mending. Okay. Just... Have that as a cantrip so I can, as I, as I walk by, I, I'll, I'll try to mend little, little holes in, in stuff as I go by. Okay. Um, yeah, for the most part, if you're going to do it like... The hands of Jesus. <laughs> just walk past and mend. Mending does take a minute to do whatever you're doing. So you'd have to find something worthwhile, spend a minute on it, and get that done, and then move on. Or uh, Yeah, then, yep. then that's what I'll do. Okay. Just to show people that, you know, we're here to to help and, and not be a pain in the in the tokus. Okay. Yep, that'll work. Um, so, um, what are you specifically looking out for? Anything at all, or just going until you see the bazaar and the inn? Well, I think Clark, Clark kind of, after he's done all this mending, he wants to find a good, uh, robe shop, because I'm sure his, uh, his clothes aren't the, uh, the cleanest at the moment. Okay. Yeah, and I'd like to find a shop um, for some potions. Okay. So, tailor shop, potion shop. And we know that John has been captured by demons, correct? That's what you have been told. Can we... Is there any type of perception or anything we would be able to like keep an eye out if there are traces of any demonic activity or anything in the area? Uh, you can either give me history or arcana, most likely arcana. Okay, my history is much better. <laughs> <laughs> history would work if you're trying to look for, uh, you've seen a couple uh, summoning circles on the ground before in a few spots um arcana would work <laughs> you don't see shit let's go with arcana <laughs> arcana i got six i got 16 but not one on history <laughs> um your arcana checks are basically gonna show you a bunch of religious symbols everywhere um because this is a like full-blown religious city so, demonic? No. Some stuff you've okay. probably still never seen before. All depends on how much your character knows about each individual religion. But for the most part, nothing demonic is, you know, coming out. Um, okay. The 15 Arcana. Uh, it wouldn't be Arcana from... Uh, if you guys are looking for anything specific, you can give me perception or investigation checks. Okay. 
It's something your passive just wouldn't see. Something, a roll to make sure to see if you're actually looking for something. Oh, God. Okay. You guys are doing horrible. Get him out of the way before we fight. Is it Icona or do uh, investigation? No, investigation or perception. Nice. The 15 perception. Yeah, so the 16. So we've got a 12 investigation. So I think Alric's 15 investigation is going to be the only one that sees it. Now, in the corner of your eye, on one little shop, um, it kind of looks like, you're not too sure what it is, but it kind of looks like an old, um, semi-broken down, really. It's got a closed sign on it, um, but a small little toy shop. You can't really make out the, um, it, uh, the name of it without actually getting up top, because the, like, the name itself is quite faded. Um, but you're going to see a symbol... Scribbled just on the side of it in passing. Once I find where I put that symbol. Where did we put it, Brandon? There we go. So I'll stick this in Discord for you. If Discord will let me. So you're going to see that just inscribed just on the corner of the shop. And you and Buster both know that symbol. I, I'll give Buster a, a nod and in these cans direct him towards it. What shop's it on? Uh, it's on what looks to be an old abandoned toy shop. Looks like it's... Um, uh, a shop that uh, used to, um, uh, like, people who just went in and ordered, like, toys for the kids, like little marionettes. But the door is slowly somewhat barred. It's dark, and you can't really see through the glass. No back door. It's like you're just walking, like, the shop's right on the corner of an alley you as you're walking through. Mm -hmm. We'll come here. back at dark and brain. Okay. Back at night time and break in. Oh, uh, hour. That sounds good to me. Probably shouldn't break in as soon as we get into the city, though. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you, for uh, you guys, it'd be about noon this year. And from the others? Or yeah, they know a little bit about our past. Oh, and for flavor wise, in common, yeah. Sorry, yeah. For flavor wise, also, um, I meant to tell you guys this when we had our uh, uh, like our other session zero that we had when we just went over a few bit more things. Each of you have this as a tattoo that is hidden on both of you. So that they could recognize one of their own. Oh, well, you you um, are more in in with them, so I'll I'll let you tell the others if past the same past we talked about the other day. Um, Hmm. Kargas just gonna look at both of you and guys go you two okay? Leave no man behind, isn't it? That is a good saying. No witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> So 
So did you let them know about what you saw? Yeah, that's why I went back to come and okay, per- no, come with us. You broke it up a little. Um, yeah, my internet. That's okay. Today. Uh, Cargas just going to tell all you guys to come into the alley a little bit and what? I don't see anything. And you two... Uh, um, we'll break into the shop tonight if you guys want to come. I'm just wondering. I don't see anything. And Annie and Clark, you would notice there's no mark there for you. It's just those two that could see it. Can I cast a type magic? Um, yep. Well, it takes ten minutes, so never if, mind. I don't necessarily want to just stand here for ten minutes. That's fine. Okay. I, tr- I trust you. I'll take your word for it. I will. I'll watch your back later if we if breaking in does happen. Uh, Cargash is just going to look at you guys and go, well, or we could ask to uh, someone who might know, but I do, uh, we are in a hurry, so I do see that certain regular things are kind of thrown out the window right now. As long as we don't get caught, I think we should be fine. If they can see something we can't, I assume most people can't see it. On a good note, though, uh, Cargath, when he did his first check, or was it Cargath? Nope, wasn't him. Uh, your perceptions and investigations would also let you see, once you guys hit the Grand Bazaar, that your inn is pretty much right in the middle. It's one of the bigger buildings that are there. Um, and within, like, five or ten minutes, you guys would be able to find a potion shop and a tailor shop. No problem there. Um, the tailor shop that you're going to find, you're going to see two, I believe. Um, one is called the Clean Cape, and the other is called the Adept Carpet. We'll do the tailor shop first. So would you like to go to the Adept Carpet or the Clean Cape? I'll go to the Clean Cape. Clean Cape. Okay. Uh, as you get through the door... I, oh, there I am. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I wanted to go to, too. I forgot I was mute. <laughs> that's okay. Um, the clean cape itself, as you go in, uh, there's like a good half dozen people in here um, that are perusing this place. It, it's like walking into just like your standard um, place that has just row upon row of just any type of material and color you're looking for. Uh, it looks like they hand tailor everything here. You pick out what you want, they measure you, and then they make it for you. At the counter is a very, very old dwarf. Um, he's got long curled uh, auburn hair, green eyes. Uh, he's only about three foot ten, but he's got a massive stomach. Um, but he's got like a like the standard braided mustache that goes down to his nuts. Um, and he's got a very big head compared to his body. He's going to look at everybody and go, Ah, greetings, greetings. What can I do for you today? The name's Bally. Bally Barrelchin. This is my shop. I am just looking for... I'm in line for a shitted new gear. Sorry, you broke up. I didn't hear you. I'm looking for a set of new outfit. Some of my stuff's a bit tangy. Ah, yes it is, isn't it? That is quite a shame. Um, but yes, I. someone your size is easily to uh, fit for. Anything particular you're looking for? Any style? Or just something form-fitting? Dark and form-fitting. Dark and form-fitting. Um... You looking for like lined leather, anything particular? Oh, I wouldn't say no. It does get chilly up here, so I'll I'll line it in some nice dark sheep wool. 
How about that? Even though you might be fine. Being a hair gone? Ah, let me take some measurements. So he's going to come around the corner. You guys pretty much see almost eye to eye. Uh, and he's just going to start taking some measurements on you. Uh, anyone else, by the way, while I'm taking measurements, need anything? Yes, I'm just looking for uh, maybe a new uh, shirt and, uh, and uh, possibly trousers. Hmm. Don't get many of your kind here needing clothes, but I think I think I can manage it. Your feathers do tend to get in the way of certain things, but I will come up with something for you. Uh, and after he's done uh, Buster, he will come over and start taking measurements on you. And as he does that, Clark will kind of just like like puff his feathers up so he can get more in underneath. <laughs> So you, you see this little barn owl just kind of poof. Um, I'm also wondering. Um, I would also like uh, a uh, a cape as well. Could could you uh, accommodate that? Ooh, capes are my specialty. That's why it's called the clean cape. What color? I'm looking for a uh, a a nice blue. Okay, blue. Yeah, all right. Um, possibly, and possibly if you could, um, on the inside of the cape, I would like to see some, uh, I will leave it up to, to you, but the letter C on the inside of the cape. The letter C. I can embroider that. That's no problem. Being something your size, it uh, doesn't take a lot of material. Um, how far down would you like the cape? Like two feet after the ground, just up to your, uh, I wouldn't want to say ankles, but feet? Oh, it's going to be a small one. So and he's going to just like point at the top of his, uh, what would be his waist. Okay. So we'd be. Oh, okay. No. That'll... Okay. Uh, that is actually quite easy. That's. Not a lot of material. Okay, uh, the inscribing might take a little bit, but I will come up with something for you. Uh, just the one cape, or would you like two? No, just the one would be fine. Okay. So, a couple outfits for you, a couple new sets of clothes for you, and one cape. All right. Anything else for anybody else before I get my girls to start on this order? Actually, I do have a question. Sure. Do you uh, do you do leather as well? Um, I do some leather here, as long as it's not too intricate. Yes. No. Um, I am looking for a collar. You know, that would actually fit the uh, rather hefty panther. Yes, I'm trying to <laughs> pretend it is not here. Um, I do have something that will work for them, yes. I'm going to say that Kerrigan understood that pretend they're not here and just kind of cock his head and lay down but stare at the <laughs> door. Hmm. We get a few odd creatures through here. His color scheme is gorgeous, but... Please try to um, make sure he doesn't bother the guests. They are paying. But the collar Clark, and uh, a leash by chance, I could make one of them too. He doesn't need a leash. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. That'll be up for the guards to decide. I'm just giving you a warning. Do you put leashes on your horses in the city? Well, yes, rains and all that, so, yeah. The rain, okay. rains are pretty much a leash, so, yes. Technicality. <laughs> True, though. Well. It's, it's uh, it's character is like, yeah, he's actually just, Clark's going to just go to kind of go over and kind of, like, just get up on his back to show he's cool. Oh, that is unsettling. <laughs> 
Well, no. I feel like you're the nice version that's like, let it's me show you how good he is. And I'm like, don't <laughs> talk about my gender. <laughs> yeah. You bring something. Yeah, Pants are just carrying around his midnight snack. Yeah. True. <laughs> All right. Uh, seeing as you are paying customers, I would like half up front uh, so I can get this started, please. Uh, each outfit is going to be about eight gold, and the cape is only going to be about two gold for you. Uh, so that'll be two, four. I would need at least 16 to, for half of this, please. Hey, just give it all to my. I oh, thank you, sir. Uh, this should take me... I should have it ready by tomorrow. Maybe around this time tomorrow. Give him 33 and ask him to drop it off at the inn. The uh, I can do that, too. Um, which inn are you at? You guys probably forgot, but it's the Flawless Kettle, so... Okay. Uh, I, I have... I've I went with the Harry Potter. I got the crack kettle going on in my head. I'm like, no, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the flawless kettle. Great place. Um, they make some really good berry pies there. All right. Well, I thank you for your patronage and I will see you hopefully again. Uh, and as soon as these are done, I will have them sent for you. Um, do you have a room number by chance? We do not yet. Um, you could just, uh, I'm sure you could just leave them at the bar. We will get them. Understood. I'll address it to the small Owlin. The name is Clark. Clark. Beautiful. Super Clark. <laughs> Perfect. You guys have a lovely rest of your day. I Thank you, good sir. Okay. Uh, the potion shop. Do I have a potion shop? <laughs> uh, I, I do. Um, when you guys get outside and go around a corner, um, you're going to see a place that uh, it's kind of half magic shop, half a little bit of everything. Um uh there's one that is called the magic duck or the lucky comet i like the magic duck <laughs> magic duck it is okay uh the magic duck um it's it's a weird little shop when you come in um it looks to be like half of it is um dedicated to um like doing children's stories for kids and the other half is like a working alchemy lab it's a weird little shop uh, and inside you're gonna see a very very uh about six foot six dragonborn male uh blue skinned uh, and you're gonna see him hovering over top of just like a small little bunsen burner and uh, beaker and he's just gonna Hold up a finger go, one minute, I do not want to spill. Uh, and in the back, you're going to see probably about eight or nine kids surrounded by another smaller uh, dragonborn reading them a story. Aww. Ah, pleasure. Um, are you here? I've never seen any of you before, so I don't think you're part of the program. What can I help you with? Um, I was hoping to find a couple potions of healing uh i do have a few uh most of them were used during the earthquake a few days ago to help a few people uh but i have made a couple more um anything particular you're looking for um do you oh. have any greater potion unfortunately no all i have is just the standard how long would it take to uh, to uh, concoct a couple of the greater potions? Um, at this time, I'm a little busy, unfortunately. Um, three days at max. Let them in, sorry. I have Clark, a few Clark. other orders. 
Clark will take out uh, 10 gold and say, is there any way we could uh, uh, expedite? Unfortunately, no. The uh, council has me working overboard on other things. Then he puts the 10 gold back and says, understood. <laughs> But I will put them on my list of things to do. Would you like to put a down payment on a few of them? Or would you like to just come back when they are done? Well, let us, uh, if you don't mind, let us take the uh, regular for now. And I will give you, well, how much would the greater potions be? Um, depending if oh. you're trading, if you have any tokens... They normally run for about 100 gold apiece. Some of that material is hard to get up here. I usually have to ship everything in. Standard potions are going to run you right now. I think they're 30 gold each. And uh, what is your current inventory? I have three, I believe. So Clark will actually... 100 gold. We will take those for now. There are 30 want, gold. I can, I can nope. pay some of that. You don't have to pay all of it. It's all right. I, I have. Well, thank you. Okay. Uh, you get I'm hesitant <laughs> to ask for a down or to do a down payment if we're not sure how long we're going to be here. <laughs> but yes. I would like to keep looking for a greater healing potion, too. Okay. Um, I will probably tell you, you might not have luck around the corner at the other shop, but you never know. But, uh, is there anything else I can help you with? What, you mentioned the program, um, with these kids, what, what's going on with the uh, kids? Is, what do you do here? Well, uh, one of our daycare, um, uh, got destroyed. So we are trying to do our best by taking some of the children every day. Um, I know it. he looks a little scary, but my companion here, I'm going to point at Kerrigan, is great with kids, and they tend to love him. Would you mind if he goes and says hi? Um, I will accompany you, if that makes it any any better. Oh, I think the kids will uh, not say no to that. Uh, you can add inspiration for that, too, please, Annie. Yay. I'll just send him over. Yeah, um, they're going to probably ago. scream first. Uh, they're in the middle of a story <laughs> that they have been paying attention to. Um, but then they're pretty much just going to yell out, Kitty, and run for him. I'd say he'll probably just roll over on his back and just yeah. bear his belly and just let him play. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, the uh, the female dragonborn is just gonna uh, put the book away, uh, stand up, and you're gonna see she's shaking a little bit. Um, this was probably not part of her day plan. <laughs> uh, just it's just more of a stand up, shake it all out, pretend it's not there, and then sit back down. Uh, next time, can you warn me, please? I appreciate it, though. Sorry, we asked up front. He just mm. kind of came over. He yep. really likes He children. likes to surprise me every now and then. Uh, okay. Well, the children are having fun. <laughs> All right. Um, so we've got three healing potions and entertaining some kids. Okay. Correct. <laughs> do, you want, do you all want to check out the other shop just in case? If you, if you would like, that is fine with me. Uh, as you guys go back We don't really know what we're getting into. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as you guys go back outside, um, you're going to notice um, the shop is a lot nicer. Um, this one looks more um, geared to a lot of different arcane, um, the Lucky Common. As you walk in, um, you are actually going to see an older male tabaxi. Uh, golden fur stands about six foot one uh nice slim build green eyes um he's got a very very nice 
Um, he's kind of like wearing, uh, what colors are we here for him? Um, he's got a multicolored like cloak and vest on, red, blue, green, and white. So he's very colorful. And as you guys come through, um, basically you're going to see um, another version of him just pop up at um, the counter. He's in the back. There's a couple other people in here, uh, but it looks like he's doing some sort of arcane stuff on a parchment. Um, and the one at the counter is just going to go, ah, while I'm busy, how can I help you? Um, hello. Uh, nice to see another tabaxi. I believe you're the first that I've met. Ah, we Away are from home. we are a rare bunch up in here. Um, what are you guys looking for? I'm a little busy back here, but um, I do have time to do orders. Um, do you have any potions of healing available? I know we've heard they're in short supply right now. Uh, made some yesterday, so they haven't came and paid for them yet, so they are free on the market. Oh, okay. Do you have any greater potions by chance? Graders. Uh, let me look. Um, he's going to just see him disappear and he's going to be in the, uh, you're going to see him reappear at the back of the store. He's going to go through a bunch of stuff. Ah, uh, we have two. So he's going to yeah, appear back at the, yeah, he's going to appear right at the, um, shop front again, uh, and hand them over. Um, those unfortunately I think are running for about 95 to a hundred gold a piece. Unless you have any tokens of commerce. I think you guys still have a couple. I think Cargath has one in his inventory. Who sure I still have one? Are you talking about the tokens we got in? Yeah, in Marzell from uh, Tandard. Tandard or Chester handed you a couple, I believe. I think you were handed three, and I think you've only used one. One or two. I think we're handed one each. Yeah. Um, I don't see it in Cargas inventory, but I don't think he keeps his inventory updated. I remember you guys used one at a potion shop. But we used one at, um... What's her name? The, the Hag. Remember. Oh, the ha Yeah, that's right. You got, uh, Abigail gave, uh, took one off you. That's it. Yep. So you'd at least have at least one or two left. Yeah, because you said, uh, they were from Marzell. Yeah. You didn't mention we could use them otherwhere. Yeah, they're, mm -hmm. anything like that would be, uh, <clears throat> good. Yeah, I think. I'm happy, I'm happy to just buy them if. Yeah, I, I know I don't think have a token, but I'm happy to buy him. Yeah, until we lost Ned, I think he was given one too. So I'm gonna say that he probably gave yep. you his too. So up to you. You can use a token yeah. or pay uh, hundred gold each. I'll take them both. Okay. Um, Kargath is just going to look at you and go, um, I have a feeling I'm probably going to end up using one of them, so how about I pay for one of them? Perfect. Okay. And then I'll take those, we'll, we'll take the regular, the normal potions too. Um, and give one of the greater ones to Kargath. Okay. Um, he's got, I don't think I rolled to see how many of them. He's got four of them. How many did you buy, Clark? Three? Three, yes. Okay. Well, and I would have given them to you, but you were the one that asked about them, so... Okay, I was just going to stock up, like, stock up for the group, because <laughs> going into a area full of demons, you know, it's, we've both almost <laughs> died. <so. laughs> Sounds good. Well, I do have a, I do have a few uh, spells that, that can help as well, so that's why I figure... You guys can take them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna. Uh, All right, so I'm giving. I'll take. I'll take two. I'm gonna take. Um, okay. If Cargath wants to get one of the yeah, graders, I'll take one. the grader and then two of the regulars. Okay, perfect. 
So what is that? One sixty? Uh, yeah. Okay. And I deducted his one thirty. Hey, man. Ah, absolute pleasure. I will have to put more of them on my back burner. Thank you very much. And I also, I want to kind of covertly ask him if there's a way to just like under my breath, ask him if he has anything that I could coat a dagger with any type of poison or incapacitating agent. Um, He's just going to give you a little chuckle and go, uh, uh, yes. And he's just going to quickly hand you something like it's pretty much going to go right into your bag. Um, that'd be 50. All right. I'll drop another 60 on the counter and He'll just wink, wink. and <laughs> yep. I will uh, put something in your inventory when I can come up with something fun for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you guys like to do or find your in? I think the in would be a, uh, a nice uh, stop real quick. Okay. All right. Um once you guys leave the shop and head towards the inn, we will do our quick break now and come back after that.